I'm interested in bioinformatics and population genomics, and I'm trying to address two issues. Uh, one of them is scaling up uh, gene prediction, and the other is to infer the effective population size history uh, in insects. So gene prediction is a method to find uh, in your sequence where the genes are, and um, it is important because genes are the basic building block of organisms. And um, there's many ways to do it. There's many gene prediction models with different algorithms, different approach. And the problem is that each one of them gives a slightly different prediction. So you can see um, on the black background, for example, that we have five uh, gene predictions with different uh, models. And each one of them give uh, a different result. For example, the first one thinks there are two genes. Uh, the second thinks there are three, and the third one, and so on. And uh, although in some cases the axons are the same, so the boxes, uh, sometimes they are different. So what some pipelines try to do is take into account all the evidence uh, to produce uh, the, the best uh, gene prediction. The problem is sometimes it's not easy to do for the, the software. So you end up having to ask a human being to look at the data uh, and at the patterns and try to find out what the correct uh, gene prediction is. The problem is uh, that takes time uh, and it doesn't scale with the amount uh, of genomes that are being sequenced due to the decreasing cost of sequencing. So one solution to this problem might be to build a web application to crowdsource gene prediction. Uh, Crowdsourcing is asking to the crowd to perform uh, something for you. It has been uh, used in many um, scientific projects, um, and uh, some of them are very successful just because people are uh, feel self-rewarded being able to contribute to science uh, in some way. Uh, but in other cases, uh, <laughs> people don't care that much about it. So we have this situation um, uh, of a concept called cognitive surplus, which means that people are spending too much time uh, with useless tasks uh, instead of contributing to something good. For example, the big uh, blue square is the time people spend on television compared to that tiny red dot that is the time that was necessary to build Wikipedia. So you can see if you could just tap into a small amount of people to get them to do something more useful, there's a huge amount of resource here. So one way to have those people collaborate in something is through gamification, uh, which means applying game mechanics to a problem to try to get more people uh, working on it. Uh, so for example, instead of having 50 million people playing a useless game, you could have people playing an actual uh, useful game that analyzes, for example, cancer research data. So we are trying to apply these concepts of uh, crowdsourcing and gamification to our problem. So here you can see that we have, uh, this is the, the, the interface of our project, you have uh, different predictions. And what we are trying to do is to make it easy for uh, anybody to come here and just edit the gene prediction, for example, uh, resize um, an exon or merge exons. And uh, we also intend to provide information uh, through guidelines and tutorials to teach people how to do it so that they don't have to be an expert in uh, gene prediction to learn uh, how to contribute to it. Um, and then at some point we hope to add the gamification to the project. So this project started by taking um, an existing uh, program and trying to make it more uh, scalable and gamify it. Um, so currently what we are trying to do is solve the issue that the program has because we can't have um, too many users connected at the same time without overloading uh, our servers. So if you want to build a platform from the, for the crowd, we have to solve that problem. So we are trying to fix it in the code. And I've been mostly working on the biological part of the code. Um, and also a little bit on the gamification, trying to build a, a dashboard where you can compare 
uh, your results with your friends. Um, a secondary objective, uh, once we have everything working, will be to use the data generated by the users to feed back into the gene prediction algorithms through machine learning to improve them uh, and get better uh, gene predictions without uh, using uh, human beings. Um, the other project I'm working on is related to the effective population size, which is the theoretical number of individuals that contribute gametes to the next generation. And this is important because it's a measure of genetic diversity, so it can be used, for example, for um, conservation purposes. And um, it affects the selection efficiency, so it's important to understand it for evolution. And um, it has been used, uh, for example, to uh, study climate, uh, historical climate change, uh, measure the anthropogenic uh, effect, discover uh, unexpected bottlenecks or detect uh, the time of divergence of population. Um, but to, it has been difficult to measure, mostly because uh, due to the highly stochastic nature of inbreeding and genetic drift, uh, and also other confounding factors, uh, and also uh, due to the amount of data, specific data that was needed to measure it. Uh, but now we can do it just with one uh, diplot genome through the PSMC method. Uh, so this is a result of the PSMC. Here you can see uh, with different colors, different genomes. You have on the X axis the, the timeline, and on the Y you have the effective population size. And so you can see that uh, around uh, two, two billion years ago, there was a decrease in population size, then a rise, and then a decrease again, uh, just from uh, single diploid genomes. Um, although this method hasn't been used uh, a lot uh, in insects uh, until now. So what we expect to do is use the PSMC to answer some evolutionary questions uh, in insects. For example, one of them could be, uh, is the effective population size bigger uh, in solitary insects compared to social? Uh, it, that will make sense because in uh, social uh, colonies you have uh, less individuals uh, reproducing. Uh, but, uh, and it seems to be the case uh, in other papers, but we hope to, to use the PSMC to have a better confidence in answering these questions. Um, so, the, to answer the question, I will have to run the PSMC across uh, a wide range of genomes from uh, solitary in uh, social insects and their solitary relatives. Um, but currently, what I've been doing is um, getting uh, the PSMC to work on our uh, cluster and trying to reproduce some previously published results to give, get a, a better understanding of uh, how the PSMC works. Um, and that's it. Thank you.